So there are cyclo additions other than the Diels Alder cyclo addition. All these cyclo most of these cyclo additions have in common the fact that they have this species that has four pi electrons. So let, let's see an example of this. Uh, of course, we, we've already seen the diene that has four pi electrons. That's a given. That's for the Diels Alder, and we know all about, all about that. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Well, as it turns out, we have encountered in organic chemistry other species that also have four pi electrons. And let's look at one of these, in addition to our good friend, the diene. One of them is ozone. Ozone has four pi electrons. So let's, let's draw out the Lewis structure for ozone. It's kind of a weird one. You don't generally see three oxygens bonded to each other like this. But that's the full Lewis structure. And if we go through formal charges, that oxygen has a positive charge and the oxygen on the right has a negative charge. Now, if we draw this more to highlight the pi bonds, I'm going to draw them straight in a line. These two oxygens form a pi bond together. There's, and there's two electrons in there. And this end oxygen has a lone pair and it's lined up with the, P, the uh, pi bond next door. And so this indeed does have four pi electrons. This is an example of something called a 1,3 dipole. Now, 1,3 dipole, it, it's a dipole because it has two charges on it. Not just two charges, but two opposite charges. Now, when I hear like, you know, dipole, I think of opposite charges. And then in front of that, I see 1, 3, and I think, oh, I guess the opposite charges ought to be in a 1, 3 position to each other. So let's number the atoms in ozone, and you'll see the relative p to positions of these charges is not 1, 3. You know, they're next door. They're really 1, 2, even though it's labeled 2, 3. So they're, they're next door to each other. But to call this a 1, 3 dipole, what they're really looking at is another resonance form, where we break that pi bond. Let's redraw this structure. And they're looking at this particular resonance form. And for this resonance form, now all of a sudden we have our opposite charges, and they're in a 1, 3 position. Now, when I think of ozone, I always think of this upper resonance form because that is the resonance form that gives you all the atoms with a, clo um, with a full octet. But when you think about other resonance forms, you can kind of imagine that this is more befitting of a name of a 1,3 dipole. So we've encountered ozone. That is a 1,3 dipole and it undergoes these kinds of cyclo additions, just like a Diels Alder. We'll talk about that later. We've also encountered another one, and that is an azide. And so this is an azide that's reacted with some R group. It's not sodium azide. It's azide after it's done an SN2 reaction or something similar. So if we draw this Lewis structure for azide, which we haven't done very many times, we get this structure. Azide, as it turns out, if we think of it more just looking at the pi bonds and the p orbitals, sure enough, it also has four pi electrons. And we haven't talked about it, but alkyl azides and substituted azides also undergo cycloaddition chemistry, just like ozone does. So there's this whole branch of chemistry that we've sort of ignored, but now we're equipped to talk about it. So we're going to discuss cycloadditions using these species. What are these things called? They're called 1,3 dipoles. There's more than just ozone and azide, but these are two of the most commonly encountered examples.